everybody, my name is James Cook. Welcome to my vlog. Okay, so today I want to talk about EVs in the park and also the sort of general state of electric vehicles in the UK. So EVs in the park is a, a great sort of EV event that they do at the Coventry War Memorial Park. Uh, it's, a, it's an annual thing, generally. I mean, it didn't happen last year because of the pandemic, but it's on this year. It started in 2015 when there were five Renault Zoe's started by the Renault Zoe and ZE owners group and um, then the next year they would sort of opened it up to any EVs and they had sort of 32 odd EVs turned up and you know then it was more and now it's a lot more and I'm sure next year it's going to be even more and it, what's particularly interesting is in the sort of few years that I've been going, the number of different EVs that you can get that, that show up for this event is just, you know, it's gone exponential. There are now lots and lots of different EVs out there, different shapes, different price points. It's very, very encouraging. It's a nice little family event, EVs in the park, because what happens is you, you basically you just sort of buy your ticket, which at the moment anyway, they were free, and uh, then you get ushered into the sort of the, the grassy park area where you park up your car and there's a few sort of stalls there like sort of Cleverly EV the um, servicing people are there and you've got the Tesla they had a car there and there's a few others sort of the Tesla's owner group was there as well um, you know so there's quite a few different sort of little stands but that's not really the point the real point is to go have a picnic in the park with your car and chit chat with other like-minded EV maniacs and yeah it's good fun and so that's that's what I've been doing earlier today uh, I decided not to shoot this little bit of video there partly because I'm so out of the habit of videoing I'm really self-conscious when you know I'm standing there and there's people about and stuff so and also it was a bit sort of noisy and very hot with not a huge amount of shade so I decided I'd I do the talky bits of this video in the you know, quiet, civilized shade of my own home. It was really good fun, and I um I always enjoy going. I, I do recommend it. It's interesting how it has grown over time. As sort of, I mean, when I first bought my car, I think EV sales made up half of one percent of total UK car sales. Now, I think June is the latest month they've got figures for ten percent. That's not bad. That's quite an improvement. You know, in seven years to go from half a percent to 10%, does that again over the next 10 years, then, you know, that's, that's pretty much the end of petrol and diesel cars. I'm sure it won't quite be that, you know, that, that, that final. There are still some big barriers that need to be overcome when it comes to EVs. So specifically in terms of barriers, I think the main ones are the charging infrastructure, in particular the charging infrastructure for people that don't have their own driveway and their own home charging. Actually I think that's a much bigger barrier for a lot of people than the en route charging which is getting better all the time and I have high hopes for that being sort of solidly improved over the next sort of 12 to 24 months. Now that GridServe have bought Ecotricity out of the Eco, uh, what was it called, the, the electric highway uh, which is great because the electric highway is it strategically it's brilliant the idea that there's you know a, a bank of ev quick chargers at every motorway service stations is just it's obvious that that's how it has to be if people are going to drive around i mean you can't be constantly looking on an app for oh you know and readjusting your route to try and get to a charger and you know no 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 you just want to be driving and then go oh you know what i'm a bit hungry I'll pull off at the services and then you plug your car in because why wouldn't you? And by the time you've had some food and gone back to the car, it's charged and you can get the rest of your distance. And that way you just pick your stop for when you're hungry and the car will make do with whatever power it gets given when you stop. That's, that's the way to do it. That way you're not inconvenienced at all. You're, you're less inconvenienced than the poor petrol and diesel drivers because they stop for lunch too. The difference is after they've stopped for lunch, they also have to go and then fuel the car up. So it's like a whole extra step. Yeah. So that's that's my thoughts on that. So it's great that uh, that the uh, the electric highway is now in the hands of GridServe, who are hopefully going to, you know, really turn it into the 
infrastructure necessity that we have need of in this country. You know, that's that's what it is. It's that f filling in that infrastructure gap for all the cars that aren't Teslas. And um, yeah, that's definitely going to help open the floodgates to more EV sales because, you know, not everyone wants to drive a Tesla and some of them are quite expensive. Well, most of them are quite expensive at the moment. Um, yeah, but I wouldn't, you wouldn't find me owning an EV that wasn't a Tesla, I think, because, you know, I the, the superchargers, I just, you know, I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to trust that other chargers were reliable, although I'm starting to get more and more trusting of certain chargers. Yeah, Instavolt haven't let me down yet, um, even in a thunderstorm, <laughs> which was exciting. It did actually stop charging. It was a big flash of lightning and, and then it just stopped charging, but um, didn't, you know, I, don't, I, I think that was just like a sort of a, a voltage fluctuation cutout. But yeah, that happened to me when I uh, last went to Hastings with the family, which was actually last week. Hmm. So yeah, there's it's lots of good positive stuff that sort of moved forward. Oh, and it, one of the things that's probably going to help encourage further EV sales in the future is the fact that um, I think it was the AA that said, just read this on the BBC News website the other day, I, I think it's uh, petrol and diesel prices have now hit an eight year high. So, you know, that certainly helps. Because I remember when I first bought my Tesla, the price of fuel was quite high and then it seemed to come down quite a lot, which I thought was actually, I mean, you know, you're still saving a huge amount of money with fuel, even if the prices don't go up that much. You just, you know, you just don't have to worry about the fact that the price of fuel is going up when you drive an EV. I think that's the main advantage rather than the actual financial savings being greater because the financial savings are pretty huge. You know, whatever the price of petrol is doing. I, uh, I definitely think we have reached a, a tipping point, a point where there's no going back and EVs are the future of road vehicles, at least for now. And um, I think that's a very good thing for lots of reasons, but mainly the pollution one. And, you know, the fact that you can run an EV and have it be carbon neutral. You know, you can you run an EV and have it not, not emit any carbon at all. You do have to use renewable energy to build the thing in the first place and to do all the mining and to move all the resources around and you need to use renewable energy to charge the thing up but it works all of the pieces of that puzzle are, are there from a technological point of view except perhaps the large-scale transport maybe that's not quite as there as as it could be Mm. It'll get there, it'll get there. Right, I'm waffling, and I specifically didn't want to waffle in today's video because I wanted to make today's video short and succinct. Hmm. And then I think what I'm probably going to try and do tomorrow is have a go at more of a sort of daily vlog style video because I miss it. And I think at least some of my subscribers probably also miss it. And... I don't know if I've actually got the the energy, the wherewithal to actually be producing a daily vlog style. Vi I don't know if I'll do it daily, but you know what I mean when I say a daily vlog style. So rather than like today where I just sit down and I talk and I have some B-roll, which I pop in and that's that. More of a sort of, you know, hello, I wake up, I've got stuff to do. I do this, I do that. I sort of, you know, involving new people in some of the exciting, interesting adventures that I have. Because, you know, stuff has happened. And for the most part, over the last few months, it's just sort of not gone anywhere near a camera, which is um, quite unusual for me. And I miss it. So, yes. Well, hopefully I will see you guys or some of you at uh, a future EVs in the park. I will definitely be there next year if I possibly can be. And um, I hope you've all enjoyed today's video, found it interesting. If you have, remember to leave a like and share and subscribe if you haven't already. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. The uh, links are in the description. And a big thank you to my Patreons, because you guys are awesome. And I'll see you in the next episode of my vlog. Bye. <laughs>